In social choice theory, Arrow's impossibility theorem, the general possibility theorem or Arrow's paradox states that, when voters have three or more distinct alternatives, no rank order voting system can convert the ranked preferences of individuals into a community-wide ranking while also meeting a pre-specified set of criteria. These pre-specified criteria are called unrestricted domain, non-dictatorship, Pareto efficiency, and independence of irrelevant alternatives. The theorem is often cited in discussions of election theory as it is further interpreted by the Gibbard Satterthwaite theorem. The theorem is named after economist Kenneth Arrow, who demonstrated the theorem in his doctoral thesis and popularized it in his 1951 book Social Choice and Individual Values. The original paper was titled, A Difficulty in the Concept of Social Welfare. In short, the theorem states that no rank order voting system can be designed that always satisfies these three fairness criteria. If every voter prefers alternative X over alternative Y, then the group prefers X over Y. If every voter's preference between X and Y remains unchanged, then the group's preference between X and Y will also remain unchanged. There is no dictator. No single voter possesses the power to always determine the group's preference. Voting systems that use cardinal utility are not covered by the theorem. The theorem can also be sidestepped by weakening the notion of independence. Arrow rejected cardinal utility as a meaningful tool for expressing social welfare and so focused his theorem on preference rankings. The axiomatic approach Arrow adopted can treat all conceivable rules within one unified framework. In that sense, the approach is qualitatively different from the earlier one in voting theory, in which rules were investigated one by one. One can therefore say that the contemporary paradigm of social choice theory started from this theorem. Statement of the theorem The need to aggregate preferences occurs in many disciplines. In welfare economics, where one attempts to find an economic outcome which would be acceptable and stable, in decision theory, where a person has to make a rational choice based on several criteria, and most naturally in voting systems, which are mechanisms for extracting a decision from a multitude of voters' preferences. The framework for Arrow's theorem assumes that we need to extract a preference order on a given set of options. Each individual in the society gives a particular order of preferences on the set of outcomes. We are searching for a ranked voting system, called a social welfare function, which transforms the set of preferences into a single global societal preference order. The theorem considers the following properties, assumed to be reasonable requirements of a fair voting method. Non-dictatorship The social welfare function should account for the wishes of multiple voters. It cannot simply mimic the preferences of a single voter. Unrestricted domain for any set of individual voter preferences. The social welfare function should yield a unique and complete ranking of societal choices. Thus, it must do so in a manner that results in a complete ranking of preferences for society. It must deterministically provide the same ranking each time voters' preferences are presented the same way. Independence of irrelevant alternatives The social preference between X and Y should depend only on the individual preferences between X and Y. More generally, changes in individuals' rankings of irrelevant alternatives should have no impact on the societal ranking of the subset. For example, the introduction of a third candidate to a two-candidate election should not affect the outcome of the election unless the third candidate wins. Positive association of social and individual values If any individual modifies his or her preference order by promoting a certain option, then the societal preference order should respond only by promoting that same option or not changing, never by placing it lower than before. An individual should not be able to hurt an option by ranking it higher. Non-imposition Every possible societal preference order should be achievable by some set of individual preference orders. This means that the social welfare function is surjective. It has an unrestricted target space. 
Arrow's theorem says that if the decision-making body has at least two members and at least three options to decide among, then it is impossible to design a social welfare function that satisfies all these conditions at once. A later version of Arrow's theorem can be obtained by replacing the monotonicity and non-imposition criteria with Pareto efficiency if every individual prefers a certain option to another, then so must the resulting societal preference order. This, again, is a demand that the social welfare function will be minimally sensitive to the preference profile. The later version of this theorem is stronger, has weaker conditions, since monotonicity, non-imposition, and independence of irrelevant alternatives together imply Pareto efficiency, whereas Pareto efficiency and independence of irrelevant alternatives together do not imply monotonicity. Remarks on IIA The IIA condition can be justified for three reasons, normative, practical, and strategic. Though the strategic property is conceptually different from II, it is closely related. Arrow's death of a candidate example suggests that the agenda shrinks from, say, X equals A, B, C, to S equals A, B, because of the death of candidate C. This example is misleading since it can give the reader an impression that IIA is a condition involving two agenda and one profile. The fact is that IIA involves just one agenda but two profiles. If the condition is applied to this confusing example, it requires this. Suppose an aggregation rule satisfying IIA chooses B from the agenda A, B when the profile is given by, that is, individual 1 prefers C to A to B, 2 prefers C to B to A. Then, it must still choose B from A, B if the profile were, say, or or or. Formal statement of the theorem. Let be a set of outcomes, a number of voters or decision criteria. We shall denote the set of all full linear orderings of by. A social welfare function is a function which aggregates voters' preferences into a single preference order on. The tuple of voters' preferences is called a preference profile. In its strongest and simplest form, Arrow's impossibility theorem states that whenever the set of possible alternatives has more than two elements, then the following three conditions become incompatible. Unanimity, or Pareto efficiency if alternative A is ranked above B for all orderings, then A is ranked higher than B by. Non-dictatorship, there is no individual I whose preferences always prevail. That is, there is no such that. Independence of irrelevant alternatives for two preference profiles and such that for all individuals I, alternatives A and B have the same order in as in, alternatives A and B have the same order in as in, informal proof, based on two proofs appearing in economic theory. For simplicity we have presented all rankings as if ties are impossible. A complete proof taking possible ties into account is not essentially different from the one below, except that one ought to say, not above, instead of below, or, not below, instead of, above, in some cases. Full details are given in the original articles. We will prove that any social choice system respecting unrestricted domain, unanimity, and independence of irrelevant alternatives is a dictatorship. The key idea is to identify a pivotal voter whose ballot swings the societal outcome. We then prove that this voter is a partial dictator. Finally we conclude by showing that all of the partial dictators are the same person, hence this voter is a dictator. Part 1. There is a pivotal voter for B over A. Say there are three choices for society, call them A, B, and C. Suppose first that everyone prefers option B the least. Then, everyone prefers A to B and everyone prefers C to B. That is, everyone prefers every other option to B. By unanimity, society must prefer every option to B. Specifically, society prefers A and C to B. Call this situation profile zero. On the other hand, if everyone preferred B to everything else, then society would have to prefer B to everything else by unanimity.
Now arrange all the voters in some arbitrary but fixed order, and for each I let profile I be the same as profile zero, but move B to the top of the ballots for voters one through I, so profile one has B at the top of the ballot for voter one, but not for any of the others. Profile 2 has B at the top for voters 1 and 2, but no others, and so on. We call the voter whose ballot change causes this to happen the pivotal voter for B over A. Note that the pivotal voter for B over A is not, a priori, the same as the pivotal voter for A over B. In part 3 of the proof we will show that these do turn out to be the same. Also note that by IIA the same argument applies if profile 0 is any profile in which A is ranked above B by every voter, and the pivotal voter for B over A will still be voter K. We will use this observation below. Part 2 the pivotal voter for B over A is a dictator for B over C. In this part of the argument we refer to voter K, the pivotal voter for B over A, as pivotal voter for simplicity. We will show that pivotal voter dictates society's decision for B over C. That is, we show that no matter how the rest of society votes, if pivotal voter ranks B over C, then that is the societal outcome. Note again that the dictator for B over C is not a priori the same as that for C over B. In part 3 of the proof we will see that these turn out to be the same too. In the following, we call voters 1 through K1, segment 1, and voters K plus 1 through N, segment 2. To begin, suppose that the ballots are as follows. Every voter in segment 1 ranks B above C and C above A. Pivotal voter ranks A above B and B above C. Every voter in segment 2 ranks A above B and B above C. Then by the argument in part 1, the societal outcome must rank A above B. This is because, except for a repositioning of C, this profile is the same as profile K1 from part 1. Furthermore, by unanimity the societal outcome must rank B above C. Therefore we know the outcome in this case completely. Now suppose that pivotal voter moves B above A, but keeps C in the same position and imagine that any number of the other voters change their ballots to move C above B without changing the position of A. Then aside from a repositioning of C this is the same as profile K from part 1 and hence the societal outcome ranks B above A. Furthermore, by IIA the societal outcome must rank A above C, as in the previous case. In particular, the societal outcome ranks B above C, even though pivotal voter may have been the only voter to rank B above C. By IIA this conclusion holds independently of how A is positioned on the ballots, so pivotal voter is a dictator for B over C. Part 3. There can be at most one dictator in this part of the argument we refer back to the original ordering of voters, and compare the positions of the different pivotal voters. First, the pivotal voter for B over C must appear earlier in the line than the dictator for B over C. As we consider the argument of part 1 applied to B and C, successively moving B to the top of voters' ballots, the pivot point where society ranks B above C must come at or before we reach the dictator for B over C. Likewise, reversing the roles of B and C, the pivotal voter for C over B must be at or later in line than the dictator for B over C. In short, if Kx, Y denotes the position of the pivotal voter for X over Y, then we have shown Kb, Ckb, a Kc, B. Now repeating the entire argument above with B and C switched, we also have KC, B, K, B, C. Therefore we have K, B, C equals K, B, or equals K, C, B and the same argument for other pairs shows that all the pivotal voters occur at the same position in the list. A voters. This voter is the dictator for the whole election. Interpretations of the theorem. Although Arrow's theorem is a mathematical result, it is often expressed in a non-mathematical way with a statement such as, no voting method is fair, every ranked voting method is flawed, or, the only voting method that isn't flawed is a dictatorship. 
These statements are simplifications of Arrow's result which are not universally considered to be true. What Arrow's theorem does state is that of deterministic preferential voting mechanism, that is, one where a preference order is the only information in a vote, and any possible set of votes gives a unique result, cannot comply with all of the conditions given above simultaneously. Various theorists have suggested weakening the IIA criterion as a way out of the paradox. Proponents of ranked voting methods contend that the IIA is an unreasonably strong criterion. It is the one breached in most useful voting systems. Advocates of this position point out that failure of the standard IIA criterion is trivially implied by the possibility of cyclic preferences. If voters cast ballots as follows, one vote for A greater than B greater than C, one vote for B greater than C greater than A, one vote for C greater than A greater than B, then the pairwise majority preference of the group is that A wins over B, B wins over C, and C wins over A. These yield rock, paper, scissors preferences for any pairwise comparison. In this circumstance, any aggregation rule that satisfies the very basic majoritarian requirement that a candidate who receives a majority of votes must win the election, will fail the IIA criterion if social preference is required to be transitive. To see this, suppose that such a rule satisfies IIA. Since majority preferences are respected, the society prefers A to B, B to C, and C to A. Thus a cycle is generated, which contradicts the assumption that social preference is transitive. So, what Tarot's theorem really shows is that any majority wins voting system is a non-trivial game, and that game theory should be used to predict the outcome of most voting mechanisms. This could be seen as a discouraging result, because a game need not have efficient equilibria, e.g., a ballot could result in an alternative nobody really wanted in the first place, yet everybody voted for. Remark. Scalar rankings from a vector of attributes and the IIA property. The IIA property might not be satisfied in human decision-making of realistic complexity because the scalar preference ranking is effectively derived from the weighting, not usually explicit, of a vector of attributes and this scalar ranking can depend sensitively on the weighting of different attributes with the tacit weighting itself affected by the context and contrast created by apparently irrelevant choices. Edward McNeil discusses this sensitivity problem with respect to the ranking of most livable city in the chapter surveys of his book, Math Semantics, Making Numbers Talk Sense.